broadcasting from our studios in Nassau, the Bahamas, Bishop Neil C. Ellis and the Mount Tabor Church presents the War Room Online Experience. Now you too, no matter where you are, can be a part of one church around the world, anytime, anywhere. Get ready for a real experience. Lord, praise the Lord. Hey, this is Neil Ellis. I want to welcome you to the war room. Well, I tell you, we've been having a time up in here, but today I am here to help you get to the next place in your life. So welcome. Come on in. Pull up a chair. It's going to be a jolly good time in the war room tonight. Now, before we get into the word, let's go right in to praise and worship.
child God. Come on, won't you lift your hands as we worship Him? Oh Lord, we bless Your name. We bless Your name, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. Glory to God. The splendor of our King. Let's sing it together. Come on. The splendor of our King. Oh Lord, Your clothes and majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Let my table rejoice. He wrapped himself in love. Tremble. They tremble. They tremble and it's more. 
stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. These words can be found in the 21st verse of the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 14, verse number 21. And I shall use for a subject this evening, let God do it. Let God do it. This closing message for 2022 and this final watch night message that I will deliver as your spiritual leader is designed to breathe life into your spirit and to position each of you for what's in front of you. In your life and mine for the year in front of us, God does not want to do the usual. He wants to do the unusual, the uncommon, the unpredictable, and the unprecedented. There's so much on the agenda of God for our lives that our natural minds cannot handle the big picture. We can only handle bits and pieces at a time. During the year in front of us, God wants to give us a revelation of where our lives are headed. The next 12 months will be a defining year of not only what's next, but of what's left. This watch night service is like no other. God is using this final hour in this year to position you for the next 12 months in front of you. Like never before, this is not the year to carry over anything into the new year that you know will prevent you from ending the old year and starting off the new year on a strong note. Whatever it is, let it go. Your time is too valuable. Your assignment too important. And the year in front of you too promising for you to go into the new year thinking about what you didn't get or who didn't come through for you or who hurt you. The enemy of our souls would love to see you going into the new year blaming others, blaming yourself, and in some case, cases, blaming God for all that didn't work out for you over the last 12 months. Listen up, everybody. Whatever happened over the last 12 months is not nearly as important as was coming in the next 12 months. We all go through tough times and indeed life is designed for us to go through them. Not to get stuck in them. For the new year in front of you, God has already arranged a comeback 
for every setback, vindication for every wrong, and a new beginning for every disappointment. One of the most vivid pictures of God in the Bible is that of being a deliverer. One who sets free or saves from a difficult situation. One thing that we know about God is that he is a great deliverer. So much so that our perplexities cannot baffle his wisdom. Our needs cannot exhaust his resources. Nor can our sorrow distance his sympathy. He's a great deliverer. And he always finds a way to deliver his people from whatever it is the systems of this world has set up against them. This is what we see clearly in today's text that deals with the most celebrated story in Israel's history. It's the crossing of the Red Sea. The text comes as a result of Pharaoh finally responding to the call of God to let his people go. The people have been delivered from bondage and out of Egypt. They're free now and on their way to a land that's supposed to be flowing with milk and honey. Things are looking good. It's a great season for them. Excitement is high. They go into the land of freedom when all of a sudden they found themselves in a serious crisis. A crisis is a situation in which something or someone is affected by critical events which leave them feeling helpless or hopeless. A crisis is an event over which we have little or no control. A crisis is when you have been boxed in a situation and you have no human solution out of that problem. All the human resources you have. All the human clout you have. All of the numbers in your cell phone. You put them all together. And they can't get you out. Of the crisis you're in. Because when you're dealing with a crisis. Any direction you look in. Looks like a no win situation. That's the scenario. That our text puts in front of us today. The people have been delivered from bondage out of Egypt. They're free. They're on their way to their promised land that's supposed to be flowing with milk and honey. Things are looking good. Excitement is high. They're going to the land of freedom. And all of a sudden, they find themselves... In a dead end dilemma. They were in a major crisis. Before them is the great Red Sea. On the other side of, on either side of them are mountains. Behind them now is Pharaoh's army closing in on them. They are in a crisis. So all of a sudden now. These three million people who were joyful and in a state of celebration, all of a sudden their joy has now been turned to sorrow. The excitement 
has been turned to fear and the high anticipation has now turned to aggravation and the people cried out to Moses why did you bring us out of Egypt would have been better off if you'd let us die in Egypt so Moses started crying out to God Look at God's response to Moses in verse 15. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? What you calling me for? <laughs> Finish that, Bastellus. Tell the children of Israel. Go forward. And Moses was like, are you kidding me? You see what's in front of us? How can I tell them to go forward with this sea in front of us? Come on, God. Make it make sense. But what God was doing was telling Moses to tell them, go forward because he knew he was about to remove the obstacle in front of him. And then he was about to deal with the enemies behind them. See? So, so you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, whatever your greatest hindrance is, blocking you from going forward with your life over the next 12 months, I have been sent here with a gift to you for my final watch night message, God says he's going to remove it before the end of January. <laughs> Tell the children of Israel, go forward. Are you kidding me? God, do you see what I see? The Red Sea is in front of us. And God wants me to say to you what he was trying to say to Moses. Don't make any real decisions based only upon what you see. The next 12 months are so critical. You got to understand that your faith is only as strong as what it, as the crisis it is able to survive. God's gonna literally put crisis in your way. I prophesy that everybody under the sound of my voice here or wherever you watch me from around the world in the first quarter of the year you will have at least one crisis. And it's not coming from hell. It's not coming from the devil. It's not coming from your enemy. God's going to put it there. Set you up. Get you out. And make people around you recognize what kind of God he is. Now. Ladies and gentlemen. We've heard about this story for many years. And as powerful as this miracle was with the parting of the Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea was not the real miracle. Read verse 21, please. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry. And, what was it? and he did what? Made. made he made. He forced. He compelled the sea to do what? Or compel what? Into dry land. He, he made the sea into dry land. The miracle wasn't just the parting of the sea. Because the parting of the sea should have left muck. They should have been going over the Red Sea mucky. 
mushy all by the time they cross over the Red Sea, they should have all been dewy. <laughs> the parting of the water was not the real miracle. But how can you separate an ocean and leave the dry ground? You got a dry ground. Now the whole ground has been left dry from the ocean. The real miracle was not the parting of the sea. The real miracle was the fixing of the ground for them to cross. Listen man. Let's go to verse, verse, verse number 26. Let's bring this to a close. Then the Lord said to Moses. What he said? Stretch out your hands over the sea. Now he told them that before. He told them that before. Why is he telling them again? Let's, let's read on here. That the waters may come. Oh, you want the water to come back now? The first one, stretch across, stretch, the, stretch, stretch your water across. Let the water divide. Let the children go forward. The children are all forward. They're going ahead on the other side of the, this Red Sea. Now he says, hey, Moses. Rendezvous. Do it again. It's time not to divide it, but to bring it back. Now, why is this important? Because in the middle of the Red Sea, the enemy are still pursuing our people who have crossed. All right, let's read the rest of that, please. That the waters may come back upon the Egyptians on their chariots and on their horsemen. Verse 27. And Moses stretched out his hands over the sea. And when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth. Uh -huh. While the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. 28. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots. What else? The horsemen. What else? And all the army of Pharaoh uh -huh. that came into the sea after them. Read the next thing. Not so much as one of them remained. The same thing that delivered them destroyed their enemies. And this was all God. This was all God. This is the year you got to stand still and watch. Just see the salvation of the Lord. Let God do it this coming year. This is not the year for you to struggle. Your real struggle is going to be your obedience. This is not your fight. Okay, let's, 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 let's wrap it up here. Verses 29 and 30, please. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Mm -hmm. So the Lord saved Israel that day. The Lord did what? Saved Israel that day. Uh -huh. Out of the hand of the Egyptians. Uh -huh. and, and Israel, Israel did what? Saw the Egyptians dead. Dead on the seashore. Israel saw. The Egyptian dead on the seashore. Israel saw. Listen, most of your breakthrough in 2023 is not coming in private. It's going to be public. God's going to be getting glory out of it. And most of your enemies, he's not going to deal with in private. Now, God fought for them. They didn't fight for themselves. Stay away from trying to fight your battles next year. Keep your ears atoned to the mouth of God. Listen to what he tells you and then try to obey. Once you obey God, God will cause. 
whatever you need to happen in your life to happen. And I'm here to tell you it's going to happen with good success. Okay, so my final thing now. And I had to write this down as I heard the Lord saying it. And now I speak it to you. I didn't bring you from where I brought you from to where I brought you to to let you die in the wilderness. I caused your life to be structured in such a way that you are here and accounted for in your right mind. I didn't bring you this far to leave you now. Get it together. You have things to do and places to go and it ain't over yet. I'm fighting your battles. I'm working behind the scene. I'm arranging the breaks you need. And when it's all said and done, what I promise, I will perform. I will bring to pass. Thank you so much for joining us in the war room today. And I sure hope that the time you spent with us in the war room has been a rewarding experience. These are some critical times that we're living in. And in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. With all that's going on in our world, have you been feeling hopeless, helpless, confused, disturbed, or unsettled? Then if you have, you need an anchor. And if you, you came into today's war room struggling, discouraged, disenfranchised, in need of a friend, I offer Christ to you. He's not only a savior, but he's a tried friend and a constant companion. Matter of fact, he sticks closer than a brother. If you are outside of a personal relationship with Jesus, why not invite him to come into your life as your personal savior? If you're already a part of the family of God, but the affairs and the burdens and struggles of your life have pushed you away from God and if your relationship with God is not where it used to be some time ago you're in a backslidden state but God is married to the backslider may I invite you to get your life back on track and renew your relationship with him if you're in any of these two categories please feel free to call us at 1-888-700-3473 or by WhatsApp at 242-376-9338. If you want prayer or desire counseling, counselors are also available via Messenger at Bishop Neil C. Ellis and at Mount Tabor Church on Facebook. I invite you to cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Finally, there may be some of you who feel a spiritual connection to me. You've been closely following us here at MTC for some time, and now you'd like to make a more formal connection, if that's you, then why not become a part of our online congregation? No matter where you are around the world and no matter what you are already a part of, you can be a part of an exciting and growing group of people from around the world who call me their online pastor and call MTC their online church. 
For more information about our online congregation, visit our website at www.mounttabor.org and click on to the membership tab. Follow the steps to register your interest. And that's it. Shortly after, a member of our team will contact you uh, about your registration. Once again, thank you for joining us in the War Room today. And please plan to join us again next week at the same time. In the meantime, may God bless you today. Hello, I'm Pastor Claytino Delaney. And what an honor it is to have you join in with us as we worship God through giving. Giving is an act of worship, but it is also how we keep covenant with our God. We are told in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. The sowing of our seeds and the promise of the harvest is one of the more profound displays of covenant between God and man in the scripture. Today, I invite you to participate in at least one of three opportunities for giving. The first way we can sow is through the tithe or the seed of obligation. Malachi impresses upon us to bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there will always be meat in God's house. The tithe obligates God to open the windows of heaven and to pour you out such a blessing you won't have room to receive it. The second way of giving is through the offering or the seed of expectation. This offering is a reflection of God's goodness in our lives. Luke 6.38 speaks to the offering like this, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure you give, it will be measured unto you. Finally, the love offering, the seed of appreciation. This is an opportunity to sow into the life of our bishop. Bishop Ellis does not receive a salary from this church. Instead, he lives by faith as he humbly serves in ministry. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 declares, Let the elders who lead well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they that labor in word and in doctrine. Bishop Ellis is certainly a stellar leader who should be appreciated with double honor. Online giving is very simple. Just visit the securemounttabor.org website. Select the Give option and then enter your contact details. Indicate your giving category and type in the amount you wish to sow. Enter and confirm your payment and just like that, you're done. As an option for easy direct transfer, we invite you to carefully consider the option to give via the Givelify app, now available in the Bahamas for download on Apple iOS and Android devices. For more information on steps to access and download this app, visit our website's giving page. God is a covenant keeper. Let's do our part in holding up our end of the covenant. Mount Tabor Church. Mount Tabor Church. One church. One church around the world. Anytime, anywhere. Anywhere. Walking in Victory Declarations I am victorious in life. I am more than a conqueror. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. My faith is a victory that overcomes the world. The favor of God surrounds me like a shield. I have favor in the sight of God and man. God goes before me, making the crooked places straight and opening doors that no man can shut. I have the mind of Christ and my thoughts are pure. I have the mind of the Holy Spirit, which is life and peace. I am spiritually minded as the Holy Spirit dwells within me and leads and guides me into all truth. I am a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away, and all things have become new. I have the nature of God. I am created in His image and in His likeness. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am in right standing with God. 
God loves me and nothing can separate me from his love. I am one with God. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I have been created by God to prosper and make a difference in this world. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I do not fret or have anxiety about anything. I fear not. For God is with me. I think on the good report and things worthy of praise. I believe in Jesus and I will never be put to shame. I have the peace of God in my heart. I am being transformed by the renewing of my mind. I let the Word of God dwell in me richly. I am meditating in it day and night making my way prosperous and dealing wisely in all the affairs of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, and he supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I am a tither, and the windows of heaven are open over my life. I am a giver, and the blessings of the Lord are overtaking me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am not settling for less, mediocre, average, or just enough. I am only accepting the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for my life. Now, Thanks be unto God, who always causes me to triumph in Christ. I declare and decree that I am walking in victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for viewing our live stream. We pray that you've been blessed by today's message. Should you desire to purchase a copy of the sermon, please call us at 1-888-700-3473 or visit our website at www.neilellisministries.com. Have a blessed and productive week.